I have a confession to make. I never really practiced anything by Shevchik growing up. Almost my entire playing career, I stayed away from this guy because the one or two times I gave him a chance, the exercises were really grueling and boring and really mind-numbing. Only recently, after more than two decades of playing the violin, I really began learning how to approach Shevchik in a strategic way so that it can serve its purpose better. Hey, this is Ina Langerman from Violina.live and this video is about how to practice the shifting exercises in Opus 8 without feeling like a zombie. I'm going to give it to you right now, all right? The most important thing when approaching any chef trick exercise is to bring mindfulness to the table, all right? That's it, just bring mindfulness. That's it, you can turn off this video. This is all you need to know. Okay, so my point is there is rarely a reason to do an entire exercise or several complete exercises from these books in a single sitting. The real key to success here is to have a concrete goal for whichever exercise you pick in Shevchik. The goal can be either something generic to technique on its own or something very specific to help with a section in your repertoire. So for example, you can say, hey, today my goal is going to be to really pay attention to my left thumb when I'm doing descending shifts. Um, or maybe you can say, hey, so I noticed that in my concerto, I could really use some more security whenever the distance between a shift is more than three positions apart. And I would really like to become more confident and comfortable with that uh, and really hearing those intervals. Or you could say, I really want to have smoother downward shifts whenever I'm going from a lower finger to a higher finger. Okay, you see how I'm being very specific here? This is the kind of goal you want to set for yourself. Then, depending on whatever your purpose is, you will find an exercise in this book that's going to match the best that it can. Now, of course, Shevchik wrote all these exercises in C major. And even at the very beginning of the book, he writes, transpose it to other keys, also do different bowings. It says right here in the very beginning. I think what he meant is that depending on what you are working on, find something that's going to match the repertoire or find what's going to match, uh, for example, maybe whatever key you were practicing that week. Not necessarily uh, going, oh, well, one day we'll do the entire thing in one key, the next day we'll do the... That's going to take forever. Just don't do that. All right, so let's put this idea into practice. Let's say, for example, I am practicing this excerpt from Brahms' second symphony. It's in the first movement. This is just before rehearsal F. So in measure 142, we have a shift going from the second position to the fifth position. It goes from the third finger to the fourth. And let's say hypothetically, I noticed that I tend to feel uncomfortable whenever there is a similar kind of shift, not just here, but in other repertoire as well. This is when I can notice a trend in my playing or in my thought process as I play. And this is where Shevchuk can come in very handy. So let's see. This one travels three positions, it goes from second to fifth position, and it's a third finger shift. Um, so um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to find something as similar as possible to that in here. So let's see, we need something that's three positions apart. So of course we're going to skip the beginning. This is only one position apart, first to second position, second to third. We skip all of that. Okay, right here, starting on page eight. The 16th exercise, starting there, changes of position, it says, from first to fourth position, from second to fifth, etc. So these are three positions apart. It's going to be in this zone somewhere. Now, we need something that involves the third finger. And I'm looking through here, I'm seeing a lot of second and first finger, so not on this page. Okay, number 19, we're going to go here. I noticed that um, in this set of exercises, they don't really have any that are specifically third finger shifts going up, but we can use exercise number 19 to help us out here. Um, so for example, the Brahms, this is on the E string, so I'm actually going to skip 
to the fourth line in number 19. Let's find something as similar as possible. I am looking at the second measure of the fourth line because it starts on a G and it goes to fifth position. So first I'm going to play it exactly as written here, just to kind of have found an idea of where we are. Okay, so let's take this measure and let's transpose it first. Um, so in the Brahms we have G sharps, F sharp and C sharps. So we're gonna add those here. So we'll start with a G sharp. Okay, so the next step is we're going to modify this. We're going to make it imitate the kind of shift we had in the Brahms, which was a third finger shift. So what we can do, we can add an extra note. We can change it the, at the very beginning. Instead of shifting with the first finger, and doing a classic shift, we can add um, a third finger right before the shift and shift with the new finger. It's going to um, make it very similar in terms of how it feels. So, after the G sharp in the beginning, I'll add the third finger note on the note B, and then I'll use it to shift up. Now we have the matching shift from the Brahms. That's the idea, okay? So now finally what we're going to do is we're going to add the measure before or the measure after or both maybe. Um, actually Shepchik says in the very beginning of the book, it gives us a hint. It says in the very beginning when practicing these exercises, repeat in moderate tempo first each measure separately, which we just did, then each pair of successive measures together, and then you can group them up. So even Shepchik himself, he did not want us to practice each exercise all the way through. Okay, so now I'm going to combine the measure before. So very important in these exercises, that you really practice hearing that interval uh, a little bit before you have to shift. Uh, a lot of these are based on sequences so that you get used to hearing how the harmonic progression changes as the scale goes up. Essentially what we are doing is we are creating that mind-body connection between intervals and shifts. This book is very good for three things. Building basic ear training, muscle memory, and maintaining a very good left hand frame no matter what position you're in. Now, each exercise follows a scalar sequence going up so it can really help to train the ear and so that it can hear those intervals and how they function in different scale degrees. Now, if you are still new to applying the concept of intervals in violin shifting, before you do Shevchik, I recommend that you go to this video right here where you're going to find a basic ear training exercise for single finger shifts. Thank you so much for watching and if you found this video useful, share it with a friend or a colleague. Sign up for my bi-monthly newsletter, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and happy practicing!